Hello, those who are missing. We miss you. I hope that you are well and you can rejoin us very soon. You will not miss a beat because we're taping this for you. All right. Today, up till this, uh, we've been talking about things like significant tests. We've been talking about key values, type 1 and type 2 errors, alpha, beta. And really all that is just theory. Did you notice there weren't a whole lot of numbers that you had to crunch out. It's just I gave you a p-value or I gave you an alpha, et cetera. So now is where you step up to the plate and you apply this theory with numbers. And actually it's, it's easier to do than it is uh, to just get the raw theory. So I'm going to ask you to conduct a t-test. I'm going to ask you not to ask questions until I finish. I'll leave it up on the board and as you're copying it, you can Put a little question mark and say, I'm not sure what she meant by that, but I'll come back and then we'll ask questions. So give me, give me like 10 minutes to explain it, and when I get done explaining it, then you get to ask your <coughs> questions. All right, so your job right now is to watch and write. Today we're going to conduct a T test. So it's going to have a name, one sample, T oh test, I mean, Z test, we'll get the T as well. One sample Z test for proportion. Remember we had earlier one sample Z uh, confidence intervals for proportion. So this is one sample Z test. And we're going to apply what we know so far in this chapter. First step always is to do a RIN. You cannot do a confidence interval or a TAT T test, a Z test without checking for RIN. RIN is usually given as random, like if they say an SRS or if they mention the word random in the problem, then you know it's random. Independent is similar to what you've seen before. You're going to look at the sample size and multiply it by 10. And if that's bigger, if that's less than the whole population, then sometimes we make assumptions there. But usually, the uh, a large a large population, it usually works fine. That is only when it's an SRS, simple random sample, because it's truly not independent. If you have a simple random sample and you draw some numbers out, some values, some people, whatever, some individuals are drawn out. They are not replaced, so it's not truly independent. So we check this, and it's very close to independent when we have a simple random sample. If it's not a simple random sample, you just have to use your mind and say, well, one person uh, won't affect the next. So this is all, you only need to do this when an SRS is drawn, which is almost every time. And now normal. Before, this is what we used to do for proportion, we said NP is greater than N, uh, 10, sorry, or, or N times 1 minus P is greater than or equal to 10. The only thing that will change is we're going to have a different value here for P, and it is P naught. And a P naught is not a P nut, it's a P naught. And where's P naught come from? So you'll recall that, like, say, when we started out with me in the basketball example, H sub O was P equals 0.8. Remember, I, I uh, claimed that I had a 0.8 average proportion of my free throws that would go in. And alternatively, we probably thought that my proportion was a lot lower than that. P naught is this value right here, 0.8. So P naught, we'll do one, we'll actually do one. This is just giving you the skeleton uh, theory. And we'll go, we'll erase it and we'll do one. So it's changed a little bit. So was it before? It was P hat, so now it's a P naught. All right. So that is that, and now we're going to, I'll give you the formula for the one sample Z test. To do a test, we basically we need a p-value, and we compare it to alpha. So that's not going to change. So I'm training you how to get that p-value. So to do the p-value, start looking for a test statistic, and it's a Z score. 
So you're going to find a test statistic. And it's going to be a z-score. Here's how you're going to calculate the z-score. And then you go to chart A. Again, because a p-value is a probability, are you surprised we're going to end up on chart A to find a probability? That's where we always mm -hmm. end up looking for probability. You're going to take p-hat, that's from the problem, minus p-naught. So I'm interested in the difference between the hypothesized P, P naught, and the real P from our sample. I'm interested in the difference of those. And I'm interested in how many standard deviations they are away from one another. And you'll remember last, when we were doing confidence intervals, we didn't use um, P, P, we used P hat, so guess what we're using now? P naught. All right, so. That is the calculation, and it's actually saying to the reader how many standard deviations are in this difference. Because that's the standard deviation of the sample. We call it SE, standard error. But it is the standard deviation of the sample, and we want to know how many of those are in this difference. So you don't have to understand what the formula tells you, but it sure helps. So when you plug that in, you're going to get a number, and it's going to be a z-score. So what do you expect it to be when you're looking at a z-score? I keep getting chalk in my throat. What's a typical z-score? All right, so here's what your thoughts are saying. They go from 0, 1, 2, 3, and sometimes 4, 5, but not often. And then negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So we're expecting to get a value like that in this box. So if you get something like 10, you should check your work. It could be 10, but I doubt it. So then guess where you go? Always. Chart A. Off we go to find the probability. We will be on the margin with the z-score. Remember, it's on the the margins, the horizontal, vertical, and horizontal margins. No, just it's just on the vertical margins. Yeah, and it's on the front and back. That's what I was thinking. So it has a front of that page in the back. So you go there, you find your score, and uh, find your probability. So this will be your probability, the whole thing we're looking for. And that will be your p-value. Because the p-value is a probability. So what is the probability of? It's the probability of this happening when this is considered true. Remember that. The p-value is the probability of your sample result happening when your null hypothesis is true. Can you say that one more time when you're null? Yeah. Okay. The probability of p happens when p sub o is true. Right. The probability of this happening, the sample p, when the hypothesized p is true. So the probability of p hat when p naught sub o is true. Okay, so let's do one. So you got down that formula basically, so I can erase it. Got it? You up with me? Okay, looks like you are. So we'll go ahead and do our first one, and I'll try to do. I'll probably take you all the way through one and then part way through two others and you'll give you all the different scenarios that you could meet. One example, Z test for uh, proportion. So let's see if the claim is, we're trying to look at a claim and see if it's reasonable or not by comparing the p-value for it. So let's go with the 53, since I started this one, I'll go ahead and continue with it. Let's say that I claim that my free throw score is 0.80, and you're thinking, I don't think so. And then you're thinking it's less than 0.80. So I'm going to take 53 free throws. 50 free throws. And thus, I'm going to get 32. 32 baskets. All right. So. Let's find the p-value for that scenario. And then once we find the p-value, we'll evaluate whether my claim is reasonable or not reasonable. So we're going to do a RIN 
to see if we can even do this. And the, the, is, are my throws random? Yeah. That's kind of a strange question. I'm going to check it off. Is it in, are they independent? They probably are not independent. It's probably, if I miss a little bit, then I alter it a little. And so they're probably truly not, but we're going to say they are. One does not affect the other. That's not pro really true. And then normal is. Can you drop something? Normal is where we have to do that calculation I mentioned. So it's changed from n times p is greater than 10 to n times p naught is greater than or equal to 10. So my n is, in this case, is how many were in the sample? There were 50. p naught is my claim, which remember now is this number, 0.8. So 0.8 times 5. What's 32 out of 50? That's P hat. That's P hat. It's not a calculation. Yeah, it will be. So hold on to P hat. Hold on to your hat. All right, so I didn't get that number. Does anyone give me that number? It's greater than 40. Yeah. All right. All right, and then 50 times 0.2. That might be close. Oh, boy. We just it's made it. All right. That's the lowest I've ever seen. Wait, where'd you get point two? Oh, never mind. One minus Better. P naught. It's barely made it. It's, yeah, well, really. it's not independent and it barely made that. I know. It's a little shaky. It's not independent. Okay. okay. We checked it. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. you missed one, like, you adjust. You adjust. Well, if I so miss one, I'm saying it doesn't affect my next one, but it does, because I can adjust. So they're not really independent, but the book said assume they are, so we will. All right, now we, we find the z number. So we want p hat minus p sub o. Oh, oops, that o doesn't go up there. It's like a hat. Over square root p naught one minus. Go ahead ahead of me, start putting numbers in, see if you're going to get where they go. So I'm finding the z score right now. The whole reason I need a z is so I can get a p. All right, p hat, that is from our sample. So up here I got 32 out of 50. So 32 out of 50 is my p hat. Sometimes students have trouble finding their p hats. So 0.64 is my p hat from my sample. p naught is from h naught, so you should be able to find that, 0.8. Oh over the square root of 0.80 times 1 minus 0 0.20 over 50 shots. No, it's, it's, one, it's 1 minus 0.80. Oh, yeah, that's right. Thank you. So that's really a 0.20. All right, I got negative 2.83 when I put that in the calculator. I got negative 2.82, but... Okay. All right, we'll take what I got since I wrote it up already. And that is a z-score. So, if I, I'd like you to sketch your z-scores so you can see what's happening. Zero, one, two, three. We're way down here in the normal curve <coughs> for Negative. the tail. So, like, we're wondering what that area is. And our, that's going to be the p-value right there. The area is the probability of getting a score like this. Oops, I went the wrong way. Sorry. Hope you weren't a quick writer. Now you're a quick eraser. It's a negative, sorry. So we have negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. We're down here. It's negative 2.83. Right here is negative 2.83. And so you're expecting the chart to give you this value, the area. Now, will the chart always give us to the left? Yes, it does. Always. If you forget, you look in your chart, it actually will color it on the top. It'll show you a picture like this and it'll color to the left. Oh my gosh, I see it. Well, it's hard to see up there. Turn it around. Flip it. Yeah, but see the t this table entry for Z is the area under the standard normal curve to the left of Z. We learned early on that in the Z we yeah. the area is the standard normal curve. Alright, no surprises. Alright, so when I went to chart a and I did, I went along the margin until I found a negative 
1.8 and then I went over 3. So you know how to do it on the chart. Chart A came out to a very small p value. So from here I went to chart A and I got 0 0.0023. That's 0.23 percent chance of this happening if this is true. Again, p value, the percent of this happening when this is true. That's, that's the percentage. So therefore, I am going to use an alpha of 0.05. So this is way below. So you're going to compare, you know this, you compare the p value to alpha. And we have it in your notes. If it's, if it's lower than alpha, this is way lower than alpha we are going to reject that. It should make sense to you that this data causes you to reject that. You should suspect that was coming. Therefore, reject H sub O and say there is convincing evidence So you can fill it in without speaking. What, would, what am I finding convincing evidence for? I'm rejecting that. And I say there is convincing evidence that I have a quick question. No quick questions. The free throw average is less than Point so we have to, we're not accepting this, but we are saying there is evidence that supports it. That's, we, that's pretty strong. It's not quite as strong as accepting, but we reject this in favor of that. All right, that is your first one sample Z test for proportions. It causes it caused us to reject. Yes. So. When we were using samples before, we didn't use the actual number. Remember, the last problem that we did, we used um, like 0.09999 right. because, we did it. yeah, so why didn't we do that with this sample? We this could, that's another way you could go. I can teach you how to get that number from these numbers, but this is called a z-test, but you could do that. Yes? Um, so, general rule for this chapter, we so want this to reject yeah. H sub L yeah. and find out the H sub H. Yeah, that's, that's usually the way we set it up this in our minds. Okay. Yep, so we're trying to take evidence against H sub L. Sometimes we don't find it. But that's our goal. I'm sorry, but today has been way easier than yeah. the past two days. Okay. All right. I, I think because you're standing. <laughs> you know why? Because today is the last <laughs> easiest day. Oh, you're right. Also, you're right. This, 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 whole, you know, this whole setup is just like last chapter. Right. Yeah. It's an equation which I love. You can plug and show. I told you you'd like today. I yeah. told you. Yeah. All right. She knows all right. too well. Now, I might not take you all the way through the next one, but I'm going to yeah. change the direction of this. God forbid. So okay. I want you to write down another one, because it does change oh. one part of the calculation. You probably know. You can probably teach this lesson. Just finish with part. I'm going to change the direction. So we'll go back to the potatoes. So this is what? <laughs> back to the potatoes. potatoes. And oh, this potatoes. was greater than .08. Oh, joking. Potatoes. And... I will erase these numbers. I'm in Joel's seat. Everything either is potato or something. It's probably summer. Remember that time when Stone was like, potato, tomato? Yeah, I remember that. You said that? We were like, that's not the same. Potato, tomato. Because the correct pronunciation is tomato. Well, Ryan, to that I say. <laughs> All right, this is the potato example, and I promised you a slight difference in finding the one sample Z test. So I'll take you to that point, and then I'll drop you off. I probably won't finish it. So the scenario is that we believe that the potatoes coming to us from the farmer have an 8% blemish, no greater. 
And if we take a sample and find that there is uh, a certain percentage that are blemished, we will send it back. So here we want to come up with a test. Wait, don't we need numbers? Yep, like I'm coming out. to that right now. Miss Pound. I am going to take a sample of 500 potatoes, potatoes and 47 of 500 are blemished. So I start down my RIN. I will just state that I chose those potatoes from the truck randomly, so I'll check that off. Independ independence, it is a sam simple random sample. So I do have to do a calculation this time, and it is the 10% rule. So I'm going to take n times 10 and see if it's less than the whole population. So 5,000 potatoes. I'm assuming there's like thousands and thousands in my truck load. So let's say there's 8,000 potatoes. So you would have to say, assuming that there are more than 5,000 in the truck load, we will continue. Now we're right, down be to the truck load or the population of all potatoes yeah, in the so world. Yeah, so truck because they're coming. Okay. I'm taking my sample from the truck. Just imagine an 18 wheeler full okay. of potatoes. How many are in there? Shoot. That's all the whole right. right. 18. That's all. All right. All right. It's got to be at least 10. Go ahead and conduct Daniel. this test and right. see right. what you get. And an 18 wheeler. I will go. I will join you in a second. Test test these potatoes for normality. See if you grab the right numbers. It's not going to be close to ten this time. Did you hear me? Conduct this test right now, all of you. Conduct the normality test. I want to see if you get the right numbers. This is so close. They put all the women in the land. The n equals five. What? It's still ten. No. The well, I get one in. Wow. Wow. Mm. wow. How does that mean? Wow. It's because it's wow. 0.02 instead of 0.2. It's 50 wow. times 0.2. So last, no, okay, so the last one was yesterday. wrong. Easy day was yesterday, yes, Morgan, you're correct. No, it wasn't. Oh, it was 50, 0.2. not 500. Yeah, what are you talking about? Nothing. All right. My brain. Okay. All right, so nine. I did the test. Oh, wait, no, did I your did test come out like mine? N was 500, P0, P0, 0.08. Yeah, no, 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 no. P0 is 0.92. Oh, that was funny. All right, now, can you work ahead of me and find the Z, find the Z score for this problem? Go ahead and start toward it. Nothing's going to be different so far. Hmm. Know what 47 out of 500 is. 0.094. 0.094? Yeah. 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 All right, got 1.15, so I assume Shannon's was right. I got 1.16667. Okay. I don't know, I, I must have rounded a little different. I'll take yours. Okay. Anyone confirm hers? I, I can't. It takes a... 1.17 then? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's go ahead with that, and I... I got 1.15. Did you? That's what I got. I wonder if I just... I just cut off some decimals. Oh, I, I probably cut off some decimals. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's I got close. 1.15. So it'll be close enough. All right, so 1.15 for Maggie and I, 1.17 for the others. Oh, so I, know, like, I know what's different. What? Um, jokes, I don't. What'd you get? Joke. It's okay. 1.15. Right, Wait, I got, Kevin got 1.15. I got 1.15. I got 1.15. What That's what I got. Okay. All right, well, 1.15, 1.17, I'm sure we're doing it correct to be that close. Okay, <laughs> yeah, we'll take the middle. So going to chart A, I got something around 0.8749. I'm sure you'll be close. Now, this is where the difference is because in the alternative hypothesis, they want to know greater than. 
So we want to know, so this, the z-score is 1.15, so remember how z-scores work. Here's 1, 2, 3. 1.15 is about right here. So instead of less than, and instead of shading to the left, I'm going to look at the alternative hypothesis and shade in the direction that it commands me to. So in the basketball example, it went that way. Here I'm interested in this probability, this way. So do you recall what to do with this number, Maggie? One minus. Right. Of course you do. You've been well taught. So I got something about 12, 13 yeah. percent. All right. So we compare that against alpha. If we compare this against alpha, this percentage is way below. This is our cutoff. If, it, if this is lower than this, then we reject. This is way higher. So therefore, we fail to reject. So fail to reject the truckload. We say there's not enough evidence. There's not enough evidence to say. There is not enough evidence to say that. See if you can fill in what I'm about to say. So we fail to reject the truckload. Which is H sub L. Pardon? We fail to reject H sub L. Right. Right, which is H sub L. There is not enough evidence to say that. There is more than 8% blemished. There's not enough evidence to say that. All right, so this was the only little tweak right here. Not so bad, right? So how do I know whether to take it from one or not? You look at the alternative hypothesis. If it's to the little, if it's less than, you keep the number. If it's greater than, you do one minus. What if it's a not equal sign? Yeah, that's was, next. Was alpha 0.05 for this one? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just assuming it is for all of them. All right, now we're going to do the one Haley pointed us to. What if it's not equal to? What do we do? All right. So we'll do one more, and then you'll be well taught how to do Z tests for proportion. All right, here we go. I like these. Same. Nice flow. All right, let's say 50% of the high school students in America say they never tried a cigarette. So. We are looking at a large high school in this area, and we are suspecting that that is not true. Either it's higher or lower. So we're going to do a two-sided test. So P naught, or an H sub O, equal, the H sub O is P equals 0.5, and we are challenging it for a large high school. We're going to go in and take a survey. We're not sure if it's higher or lower than 50%, but we don't think it's 50%. So I'm going into a high school and I'm taking an SRS, um, 150 students, that's my end, and 90 said they never tried. Never tried those cigarettes. So we're going to go in alpha, we're going to conduct a test against the alpha significance level of 0.05, again, alpha of 0.05. That's the normal one that we use, as indicated by drawing cards from the deck. All right, let's do a RIN. Is it random? It is. There's the R for random. Is it independent? We have to do a calculation. Yeah. So we have 150 times 100, I mean times 10 is, is and I guess that's lower than a large high school number. Yeah. Not that many. Well, there's what, 3,000? There, there. That's larger. <laughs> <laughs> 10 times 150 is 1,500, not 15,000. 
and checking normality. Go ahead in front of me. Looking down at your paper, check normality. P naught and 1 minus P naught are both 5.5. All right, so we are written ready. And let's go ahead. And if you could begin calculating your C to statistic, that will not change. So that's hard to remember. It Should makes we? sense, but a lot of students forget about it. So I'm going to go down 2.44 and negative 2.44, so about right there. And I, I need both of those, because a two-sided says, I don't care if the smoking percentage is way higher or way lower. I just said it's not equal to 0.5. So that's why I have to go on both tails. And it's called a two-sided test. You need two tails. All right, so from chart A, 2.44 gave me uh, an area that was pretty low. Anyone confirm it's 0.0071? Mm -hmm. All right. So are we just going to give you two p-values? Oh, no, that's not it. So then you have to do I that. got 0.0071. Yeah, well. That's because me and you were found negative 2.45. When I went to 2.45, I got 0.9929. Yeah. But because remember, the test, the, the uh, chart's given me lower than. Yeah. And so I have to do 1 minus that. This is a little bit trickier. So that gives me the, um, what value is that, 0.071? Now, you could have gotten that without the calculation by using negative 2.44, because the chart would have given you that. Wait. Which one is 0.0071, the 2.44 or negative? They both, they're both are. One, well, the top one is 2.441 minus that equals 0.0071, and oh, they each go to each other. Yeah, they're the same oh, okay, thing. Okay, okay, so yeah. there's two ways to get that area. One of them is to look at 2.44, but then remember the chart's giving you less than. So you're going to have to do 1 minus that to get the striped area. A way to avoid that calculation is to look at the minus 2.44 here and the chart will give you what you want less than. However, whatever way you do it, you need one of these areas and you have to double it because it includes both of them. So we have to multiply that by two. Oh, no, the chart will never give you that number. It'll only give you half of that number. I'm confused. 
So wait, where'd you So to get p-value, we have to multiply it by 2? Yeah. Because you have it on both sides. Right. So it's 0.04, and then, what? Oh, okay. So the area here is 0.071. The area here is 0.071. So in a two-sided test, you've got to get one side or the other and multiply it by 2. So the final p-value is 0.04. We compare it against 0.05. It is lower. So therefore, write out what you think your conclusion will be. Wait, is it 0.04, 4%? Wait, Miss Powell, wait, Miss Powell. Yeah, sorry. Wait, shouldn't it be 0.014? Yeah, that's what I don't have to play around. Yeah, it should be 0.014. It does make a difference. It does make a difference. I mix these up. Yeah. Okay. No one didn't understand. All right, now I multiply it right. Therefore, so we're going to compare that. This is our p-value. Once we doubled that value, we're at our p-value. We're going to compare it to alpha 0.05 and make your conclusion, and I'll join you in a second. Therefore, is less than, we look for this area. When it's not equal to, it's both areas. So I gotta put it all together in one statement, which would have made no sense if I showed it to you first. This is helpful. But now it kind of puts it in stat lingo. I'm labeling it as stat yoga. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So the assignment tonight is you're going to go back to that quiz that we didn't do the number four on. Can you find it? And it'll just ask you to conduct a Z test. And then on 9.2a, I'm going to hand that out. You do two Z tests. So you do three Z tests all together, just like we did. So you do all of this one. It's not a real quiz, homework. And then you finish number four on a previous quiz. Do we have, we don't have any more tests before we go to Europe, right? Is there a test this week? That would be this week. Yeah, we don't have a test this week. We should. We should. We have to do one more day. I have to show you how to do this with a mean and we're done. Yeah, I mean, we should because otherwise... No, we're going to be gone. We should because... I need to bring it up. Otherwise, we won't have this until after I need to bring it up. I will not have time to like study at all this week. We have to, how about take home? So I'm not going to be able to do this. Y'all can we're do that here. Uh, there's no way we can wait. Right. Dude, you're going to go to Europe and you're going to come back in like two weeks and you're going to just forget everything. There's no way we would remember. It's going to be like summer. You come back to school and you're going to just forget everything. There's no way we would remember. It's going to be like summer. You come back to school and you're going to just forget everything. I'm going to be right now. I'm going to be right now. Let's, you said there's a test on Thursday? Yeah. All right, let's test on Friday. How about 